It comes as a great shock to discover that the country, which is your birthplace and to which you owe your life and your identity, has not in its whole system of reality evolved any place for you. <laughs> It comes as a great shock around the age of five or six or seven to discover that the flag to which you have pledged allegiance along with everybody else has not pledged allegiance to you. It comes as a great shock to discover that Gary Cooper killing off the Indians when you were rooting for Gary Cooper, that the Indians were you. When I was growing up, I was taught in American history books that Africa had no history. And neither did I. That I was a savage, about whom the less said the better, who had been saved by Europe and brought to America. And of course, I believed it. I didn't have much choice. Those are the only books there were. I am stating very seriously, and this is not an overstatement. I picked the cotton. And I carried its market. And I built the railroads. Under someone else's whip. For nothing. For nothing. If one has got to prove one's title to the land, isn't 400 years enough? 400 years, at least three wars. The American soil is full of the corpses of my ancestors. Why is my freedom or my citizenship or my right to live there, how is it conceivably a question now? What we are not facing is the results of what we've done. What one begs the American people to do for all our sake is simply to accept our history until the moment comes when we, the Americans, we, the American people, we are trying to forge a new identity for which we need each other. Until this moment, there is scarcely any hope for the American dream because the people who are denied participation in it by their very presence will wreck it.